Hey anyone, how's it going? Welcome back to Obi-Wan Camera, where today we're watching the season finale of Obi-Wan Kenobi. Last episode was awesome, showing some of the real power of Darth Vader that we haven't seen too much in live action. Actually, no, we haven't seen in live action. We've seen it in comics, we've seen it in the shows, the games, but this was the first time... Well, not the first time. There was a couple episodes ago, but this was like him stopping a ship. Him absolutely disrespecting Reva by not even deigning to turn on his lifesaver. I mean, that was flipping awesome. Not to mention the flashbacks to pre or during Attack of the Clones. Gosh, the last episode was awesome. And that was some really cool Star Wars. And Tala and Ned died, which was sad. And it looks like Reva, she's going to Tatooine? Or at least she knows about Tatooine. I don't know. And for all those people who are like, oh, how did she survive? It's like, Grand Inquisitor literally said it. It's like, revenge is a great motivator to survive. These are Darksiders. Surviving deadly injuries is kind of their thing. You know, as evidenced by Darth Vader. Whatever. That doesn't matter. I'm just excited. Let's see the end of the episode. The warning again, which means more child violence. I'm still not exactly sure why the Star Wars, like, logo uh, changed halfway through the show. Well, at least she's not doing well. She doesn't look good. Oh, right. I forgot. No hyperdrive. What's your plan, Obi-Wan? You're gonna give yourself up again? See if that works? Oh no, it's Owen and Luke. Howdy. There's something you need to know. Yep, she's coming here and you just showed up with Luke. Question is, will Leia see Obi-Wan again? Or is this it? This goodbye? I don't think they'd leave it like that. Otherwise, that's it. He's She never sees him again. Every so often it just hits me how much of a tragedy Star Wars is and how horrible it is. You know, like these two. And uh, just getting reminded of their deaths and how horribly that happens. It's just... Um... I hope so. I love how she's completely ready to get to defend him, and he's like, uh, what? <laughs> we had guns over th in there? Okay, my concerns were invalid, because here they are having a talk, a mere two seconds later. You said you'd take me home. Well, I wasn't gonna give you a blaster, Leia. You're ten years old. But you won't always be. Wait, is that really the original holster Leia had in A New Hope? I mean, I wouldn't put it past them. Remember what they did with Han's dice. I just... I'm not fa uh, certainly nowhere near familiar enough with the prop to see if it's the same. I mean, the idea of Tala inspiring her, that's... That's what I expected. But... I have to face him, Master. Oh, right. Qui-Gon. He's gonna show up. Or I do. Everyone really thought Liam Neeson would show up. Today. And... Maybe not? Ah, I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Well, this... You wanna do it. It's about you and him. I mean, you're very perspe perceptive, but it's really both. Just keep them safe. I'm just here sitting here tense, not talking much. But I'm sure I'll just jinx myself, and this will be a very long reaction. But, uh, you know that. I don't know yet. I really like the lighting on the Star Destroyers. It really takes me back to the original trilogy more than any of the new, more recent stuff because it feels like the model and the original lightings they use in the model. Models. I mean, especially after Mandalorian, they could have an actual ISD model, but I don't know. I'm not afraid. So is this just going to be a separate conflict? Entirely? Like, Reva, Owen is just gonna defend, fight Reva, and... Uh, I guess we'll see. Prepare my ship. I will face him. 
Ooh. Oh, a real shout out. Where Obi-Wan will probably fake his death? I don't know. Vader thinks he's dead, right? Or at least Sidious does. I don't know. Oof. This is a cool place for a showdown. Aw, oh, I was hoping it might have been Vader's TIE Fighter. But a shuttle is okay. Aw, oh, that's cute. He said he needed Lola, and here she is. Leia snuck, snuck it out of her mother's pocket and snuck it into Ben's pocket. By the way, I am uh, wondering how expensive the Lolo toys are, because I mean... Come on, that droid is so easily made into a toy. It'll spin, it has lights, the flaps will go up and down. Sure, you can easily sell that life-size Lola for what, like $200? Here she is. Uh, she's here. I did not expect this, but let's go. Just uh, trying to make their deaths more sad, aren't you? <laughs> Look at that shot. <gasps> hey, there's the pose with the two fingers. <laughs> then you will die. Yes! <laughs> Now's a real fight. At least in the... Okay, we're... Something the show is making clear is that Anakin and Vader are slightly superior in terms of raw fighting skill to Obi-Wan, but at least now he's trying harder. He's more focused. Again, I've said this so many times. The actual ambient lighting of the lightsabers in a scene is amazing. Well, come on. You missed! You had one shot, and you missed! <laughs> Your strength has returned. <laughs> but the weakness still remains. <laughs> Love that. Arthur is like, you think you could knock something on me? <laughs> oh, he did the back block! It's like so famous or memeable of Anakin. They're just burying him alive. Ugh. I love the... Wait, you're just leaving? Go Owen, come on! <laughs> what do you want? <laughs> Good job, aim for a stab wound. But, you know, it definitely shows that despite her terrible backstory, She's definitely going to the dark side. What, this demented justice. Like killing his kid because he stabbed me a couple times? And killed my friends? That's not justice. Oof. He's trying his hardest. Keeping himself some breathing room at least. This would be a really good time for Qui-Gon's voice to shine through. Good, he's focusing on them. He's letting go of Anakin and focusing on Luke and Leia. Good job, what we want. <laughs> oh, that was a good fight, of course. Oh, look at that! No more conflict than him now! Ooh, please crack his faceplate open, like like what happened with the soap. That was the coolest thing ever. Going after his breathing apparatus, and at least knock him out temporarily. Even if he can be pissed off enough to overcome it. Maybe, maybe Vader will lose this, which is why it's it's the justification for the. When we left, I was the learner, but now I'm the master, or whatever quote. I'm a new hope that is always weird. Yes! That's exactly what I wanted. Now you can show Hayden's face in there, and you can overlap his voice. 
Oh man, that was the coolest scene in, in Rebels. I've been waiting for them to do it in live action. <laughs> Anakin's gone. Oh, there it is. You hear them both. I am what remains. Oh, the tears in his eyes. Just, uh, it's... I'm sorry. Actually, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Anakin. Oh, no, that hurts my heart For too much. Look, I became a fan of Star Wars because of Clone Wars. So Anakin falling to Darth Vader was just always kills me. It hurts my heart. I am not your failure, Obi-Wan. You didn't kill Anakin Skywalker. I yeah. did. Oh, oh, so you're going to explain that line. <laughs> but, uh, that's actually, that's actually a really mature? The same way. Cons well, well, fine. I will destroy you. Okay, yeah, fine. But that was a really mature concession. Like, yeah, it, it is my fault my that I ended up this way. Truly dead. And this is also why Obi-Wan has completely given up on Anakin by the time of the original trilogy. Goodbye. I know, I know, this is a really impactful moment, and I still feel that, but... Are you... <laughs> they're even trying to explain him calling him Darth? <laughs> okay, okay, but yeah. It was a really good fight. Now on to this. The only thing I can see ending this is that time hasn't been running at the, uh, the same pace. This is actually happening after the Vader duel, which means Obi-Wan can show up and save the day. But, I don't know. Never mind? Or maybe? I don't know. Actually, no. Maybe I. I my guess is now when Reva has a kid at her feet, she won't actually have the guts to do it. Oh, there it is. She, she, she sees herself. Well, if they knew, why would they be screaming his name, Obi-Wan? Oh, she's just bringing him back. Didn't expect that. I thought she'd just leave him there. Maybe he hits his head and he doesn't remember any of this. I couldn't do it. I failed him. He killed them all and I couldn't do it. <laughs> you have given them peace. You have honored them. You're all training to be Jedi, not Sith. You weren't training to murder people. And revenge, none of that. I become him. No. You would have become him by killing Luke. You've chosen not to. Exactly. There it is, again. Burying the light leaving the lightsaber in the sand, leaving it all behind. I've been 50-50 on Reva's kind of redemption, but hey, either way works for me. Back to the Vader's castle on Mustafar. Oh, hey! <laughs> hey, Palpy. How's it going? He will not obey me again. Perhaps your feelings for your old master have left you weaker. Hey, all you fools who wondered why he let Obi-Wan go, if there's your, your answer. They answered you. There it is. Ending off this whole thing. Actually getting to hear the Imperial March. I know people have been iffy about wanting to hear these themes, but it certainly does add a bit of oof to it when you don't hear them and that they're finally put it. Putting everything on herself, actually showing up. And the braids, those iconic braids. Oh, she kept the gloves, that's cute. I'm not sure they'll let you wear that around, but okay. All right, let's go, young lady. We don't want to keep your... Aww. <laughs> I love it. Aw, oh, come <laughs> That makes me even more sad that she's get she's dead. I thought she'd have more issues with it, but no, she was okay. I'm going to do this. I'm going to want to change a few things. First of all, give me a gun. 
<laughs> Not exactly what? Who's coming out of there? Oh, be one. Oh, that's cute. And Lola. Lola. <laughs> Who am I to separate a young lady from her droid? Aw, he gets to see them one last time. What problem maybe the I don't know, maybe he sneaks off here more often. What do you do now? I don't know. I'm gonna go back to being a hermit on Tatooine. And just kinda live alone. And uh, oh yeah, there'll be Ezra, I'll kill Darth Maul. I think you're right. These are qualities that came from your mother. Oh, but you're that's great. Passionate and fearless. Love it. Tell forthright. I, being honest with her at the end. Gifts from your father. But her Padme and Anakin. Who bore an exceptional daughter. And a son, you know. I won't tell you about that, though. I wish I could tell you more. And I won't tell your brother anything. Okay. That ship in the background, it looks very familiar, like it's from Rebels. At least the model of that ship. Ah. Shoot. Star Wars and his tragedy tragedies again. Now I also know that the next time she sees him is when he gets cut in, cut in half by Darth Vader. Hey, look, you're leaving the cave to go to an actual house. And he's wearing his old robes again, the white. Ah. Oh. Wait, not the. I don't know if they're the old robes, but at least. I think they're the a New Hope robes? I can't remember. Everything just kind of blurs together. Yes, go give those to Luke. Give that to Luke. He's gonna play with it. Even when he's older. You wanna meet him? Look at Owen, softening his heart a little bit. Which means Ben can give the toy directly to him. Hello there. General Kenobi! Ah, he did it! He did it! He did that! <laughs> he did the hello there. <laughs> oh, we thought we might get through the whole series without him saying it, but he did. <laughs> now, the perfect finisher is him meditating and hearing... Uh, Qui-Gon's voice. Or just that. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> Master Qui-Gon. Hey, it looks like you finished your Force Ghost training. No longer well, just sparkly bulbs, huh? Took you long enough. <laughs> yeah. Come on. We've got a ways to go. Oh. <laughs> hey, I'm glad he showed up, even if it was for a few words. Not much more than that. And that was part six, the finale of Obi-Wan Kenobi. In short, it was a really good finale for this whole show. First half, like, climax. Second half, epilogue. And I don't mind. It tied up this show really nicely. And it made some nice threads into A New Hope and tried its best to clean up some of the weirdness that comes with the fact that A New Hope was created back at... Who's the first thing Star Wars... ever Star Wars? And it doesn't really mesh well with modern day lore. I mean, the fact of the matter is that little mention of, like, him calling him Darth, right? That was because in that original movie, Darth was literally his first name. He wasn't Anakin Skywalker yet, but whatever. It made those that are, uh, this is the short one. This is it made those show those that are, so I enjoyed it. Overall, the show was great. It was everything I wanted. Maybe I could have done with a little bit more, but hey, expectation kills stuff. Kills your enjoyment of this stuff. You expect too much, and when that that will not happen, and you will ruin your your own perception of the show. All right, before I get into it any longer, know that I tend to ramble. I'm going to discuss this episode and the whole show, and I'm not going to be... I'm not going to make sense. I'm just going to go with a flow of thought and just ruin any chance of sleep I get to have because i got to watch Miss Marvel after this. All right. As I was saying, it, the... Um... Yeah, I have no clue what I'm saying. Completely lost my train of thought. What was it? Um, 
whatever. Let's focus on the episode in general and talk about different parts of it. Reva heading solo to uh, try and kill Luke. I was wondering what was going to happen there, but I'm okay with it. Something that has peeved a few people off uh, this whole time is that Reva is kind of a another protagonist here in the show. I believe people were really annoyed that she kind of like accused her of taking over the show. I never got that. I mean, a good antagonist should take, should have their own little arcs in a story anyway. But I guess in that case, they're like, oh, I wanted Darth Vader to be a primary antagonist. And he kind of shared the spotlight with Reva. It's like, okay, sure, I understand your feelings there. But overall, I don't mind. I liked Reva as a character. I liked that at the beginning she was like this political schemer, and then it turned later into you know, revenge against Vader. In all honesty, I wouldn't have minded if she had stayed a political schemer the whole time. That's something new. We haven't seen that before, but the tragic backstory for an Inquisitor, been there, done that. They all have tragic backstories. Her failing to kill Luke, leaving her lightsaber in the sand, I understand, what, look, she survived getting stabbed. Because, one, Vader allowed it, right? They they didn't say, it's like, we're leaving you here in the gutter. In the gutter. And as the Grand Inquisitor said, and they specifically highlighted in the, you know, episode recap, revenge is a great motivator to live. And these are Darksiders. Powerful emotions is are how they stay alive so long. It's how they survive terrible, terrible injuries. I mean, just look at Darth Vader and Darth Maul. These guys survived massive injuries that should have killed them instantaneously. So it makes sense that lesser Darksiders would be able to withstand a simple stab wound. I found it very cool how Owen and Baru kind of like took arms against her. That was an interesting sequence. It gives them more of a character arc than... They usually do. They're usually just kind of there in the background. And, you know, in the beginning of A New Hope, they're just uh, the annoying parents. And then they're skeletons. They're just skeletons. and Which is part of the reason, like, I'm talking about the, uh, the fact that Star Wars is just so tragically horrible sometimes. The fact is, we're looking at these people, and they're trying their best. They love Luke. And they're, here they are, resisting Reva. And... You know they did the same thing, and you know that's why they were killed by those stormtroopers. They tried to protect Luke, and that's why they were burned to death. It's terrible. And despite that touching moment with Obi-Wan, we know as viewers that the next time Leia will see him, he will be in that hallway on the Death Star, facing off against Vader. And then, yeah, he'll force Ghost away, but she won't know that. From her perspective, he just got killed. And yeah, sure, one of the wonkiness of this is the fact that she's consoling Luke, despite her having a better connection with him, but whatever. Whatever, I don't really care. Let's talk about the, the connections that it made with episode uh, four. We already talked about Darth, right? That's kind of like the funny thing. That we talk that uh, I know I always uh, use as a talking point when I'm talking about how the original movie doesn't f fit with modern again. It's like, yeah, originally Darth Vader was a guy named Darth Vader. It wasn't Anakin Skywalker. He literally did kill Anakin Skywalker. So this show tried to like smooth over those cracks a little bit, right? Obi Wan leaves, calling him Darth. Anakin admits that nah nah, Anakin is dead. I am Darth Vader now, which informs Ben's perspective, Obi-Wan's perspective in the original trilogy that Anakin is gone, right? And why he thinks Luke should kill him while well, Luke has that hope of a, well, naive child, honestly. And that tears, that sadness, it's just, it's exactly what I wanted to see. Obi-Wan to, like, realize this. So this is, 
apologize. It's just... It's a great moment. It's something I hope to see, and it, again, like I explained during the reaction, it reminded me so much of a similar scene with Ahsoka in Star Wars Rebels. Again, she slashed that helmet open, and they both had that same thing of like, yeah, you make... The fact is that Darth Vader is such a presence that he dwarfs... It's hard to believe that he was Anakin Skywalker until you slash that face plate open and you see him underneath and it hits harder. Like, oh my gosh, this was that person I used to love and care about so much. And I love the fact that in both Rebels and this show, Anakin's like, there, he's breathing, he's talking. And it's not until the end where he, like, reignites his rage that his eyes turn yellow again, Sith yellow. And the explanation for why he doesn't continue to hunt Obi-Wan is that, well, Palpatine is just like, dude, you're, I'm tired of your side quest, okay? You look weak, you look lame, just leave him alone and do what I tell you to. That's what I got from the conversation, at least. That... Palpatine's like uh, no longer tolerating Vader's side quest. We got to see Qui Gon just just for like a minute, and that's uh, much shorter than anyone would have liked. But I told you, expectation is bad. It kills your enjoyment of of, of content like like this. But yeah, it's good to see him. It's good to see that he you know figured out how to force ghost properly. You know, last time we saw him in Clone Wars, he was only like a bunch of sparkly orbs because it's like, oh, I didn't finish my training. Well, it looks like you can finish your training when you're already dead, which is a good thing, which explains why Anakin can force ghost. A little bit of tangent, but I always hated that in Clone Wars, they had that whole arc with Yoda learning how to force ghost, with this whole trials and all that to earn it. But despite that, Lucas and Filoni and all those writers going into so much detail about force ghosting, they somehow forgot to leave a loophole to allow for Anakin to turn into a force ghost. It's like, you need to be on the light side. It's like, you. there was so much emphasis on needing to be on the light side of the force and not being on the dark side. So it's like, it's not possible for Anakin to have learned this while being Darth Vader. So... It always bugged me. I guess this kind of goes a step in um, mending that wound. Whatever. Um, the whole fight between Obi-Wan and Vader is was really cool. I love the choreography. I love them facing off. This was what we wanted from the beginning. Right. It, the fact of the matter is that that fight between old Obi-Wan and Vader in that first movie looks terrible. I don't, no one, so there'll be people who won't admit it, but that is legitimately the worst lightsaber duel in all of Star, in all of live action Star Wars. They're just tapping the wooden sticks together. And especially when you compare it with all the newer Star Wars content, that only looks worse. So we get to see the Obi-Wan v versus Vader that we wanted to see. the four, With the speed and the power. It's what that uh, SC-3848, whatever, remastered. Somebody re even remastered that, that, that uh, New Hope fight to make it more in line with the rest of the series. And push that aside, this is what would they gave us here. I will knock it a little... I will admit there's some little weirdness, but that's the fact that these Jedi moves are so like weird and acrobatic that actual human people it takes time to like do a flip or roll against the ground. And a lot of people are used to the anime show. I know like me, Clone Wars. I just felt it was a little bit off, but that's not the fault of the of anything because well, real people can't do a flip that fast. Animated characters, on the other hand, can do a flip as fast as you want. So that's the only knock on it, but that's... Whatever, it's practical. What else are you going to do? But, uh, no, no, I'm not going to do go into that. Uh, that's a whole other conversation. I'll take another ten minutes in itself. Okay, I'm just going to switch to talking about the series as a whole. 
uh, I'm going to drill this in your head more and more, but expectations kill your enjoyment of stuff. And I'm sure, like every Star Wars content in the last few years, the same thing happened here. People came in with expectations, and then they were disappointed by what they got. I I have expectations. You can't not have expectations, but I know how to manage them, and I enjoyed this show. I really loved it. I know. I'm going to admit right here that when they first announced Obi-Wan Kenobi, I didn't want it. I thought we'd seen enough of him because he's just, he's such a protagonist. And again, I've saw a Clone Wars and he had so much screen time in Clone Wars. I just thought like, why can't you give us something new? Why not? Why do this again? But whatever my, my thoughts were, we got the show anyway. And it was amazing seeing him face off with Vader again. Those emotions played on Ewan McGregor's face back when he first saw him and like the shock of like, what the hell is that? Like, that's Anakin? What? And then, you know, just the the crushing, like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This is that. And the fact that even Anakin helps in relieving him of his pain. Like, this isn't your fault. It's mine. Which is... Honestly, I don't know if there wasn't enough focus given to that line, because that is immensely mature that is that is a level more mature than i expected like as much as he, his whole rage is based on like i want to kill you this is your fault but this is him admitting it's like i fell to the dark side because of my own doing and i've been saying it a lot i've been using anakin and vader interchangeably interchangeably here because that's something in particular that this show did which i thought was very interesting maybe it was the fact that we're our pro, our point character was obi-wan who could only see Anakin, or it's uh, good writing and the voice acting, but something about Vader in this show, compared to any other content, really made me feel Anakin more than anything. Even Rebels. That felt like Vader, only until his mask was cut open to reveal Anakin, to hear the voices layered. But besides that, he was just Vader. This show, though, Every time he was on screen, every time he talked, it's like, I could see Anakin. I could feel him still in there. And, of course, it makes me sad. It's just, I, Anakin Skywalker was my favorite character in Star Wars. I watched Clone Wars first. That's what got me into this whole nonsense. So... It just hurts every time, the reminder that that guy, that massively awesome badass Jedi, is this monster. And this show, I'm, I'm glad the show managed to have that feeling. And I know I'm, it's not just me, I'm not crazy because I watched a few other reactors and they had the same feeling of like, and again, I don't know. The music, I talked a little bit about it, but... All right, I agree with people that I could have done with a little bit more classic Star Wars. I, I, I really liked the kind of incomplete prototype versions that we've heard a few times, right? We could hear the beginning of the song, but then it changes off into something else before actually finishing. I liked those bits, but overall, I could have really done with a little bit more of... Uh, or more. Like, I heard a suggestion that last episode should have had, like, when the ships are coming to Earth and all the stormtroopers are lining up, that would have been amazing with Imperial March. And I agree. So, I enjoyed the soundtrack as it was, but I do agree that you could have done a little bit more with the classic Star Wars sound sounds. Don't forget to hydrate, folks. The effects were spectacular. You heard me go on and on and on about how the new practical sabers added such cool lighting to the shots. The fact that you could actually see the sabers re reflected in Vader's eyes when you could never see that before. It's just really amazing. And otherwise, it had a lot of the same stuff that we've seen in a lot of Star Wars TV these days. with The volume and the practicals. 
but mixed with practical sets and you know a lot of like the more practical aliens too it looked good it had the fit a lot of the newer shows have that feeling it's cool could the show have looked a smidge better with a little bit more cgi yes i yes i think so but i guess that's a slightly controversial opinion i don't know it's but like i said not gonna get into that right now that's this whole co other conversation uh the characters obi-wan himself great he's in such a broken place at the beginning of this season because it's just he's still torn over anakin 10 years later and it doesn't matter he still feels responsible he still feels so torn for killing someone who he basically leaves he killed someone who was so close to him and then it turns out that no never mind he didn't kill him and anakin went on to become such a monster and he still feels such guilt and that tears him down until this finale where he can finally let go of the guilt and you know move on which is a great way to step forward into what he is when we see him in rebels and by a new hope he's more of like a sagely obi-wan because he's let go of that biggest guilt and it doesn't and it helps that he has to interact with luke and leia who you know that's what he gets to focus on the future let go of the past and focus on the future and about luke and leia luke he just ran around he was just a kid Honestly, the trailer lied to us by showing him, making us think that maybe he would play a larger role in the show, but then double-crossing us by presenting us Leia. Now, I know people have been talking about her being a little bit small, and she is. She, The actress only turned 10, like, what, a couple weeks ago? And so that means she was 8, maybe 9, during the filming of the actual actual show. So, physically, she moves a bit younger than a 10-year-old. But one, I don't know about you, but haven't you seen 10-year-olds? Right? Haven't you seen kids who don't really... How do I uh, describe this? Who don't seem as developed as they should be? And I mean, Carrie Fisher was short. Why, couldn't, why can't Leia be a little bit, like, behind in her growth spurt? Or what, in her growth, or whatever. You get what I mean, right? It's fine. More importantly... That actress kicked butt. She was one of the best parts of this show with how spectacular her performance as Leia was. Honestly, I don't... That alone should be clear why they picked her over an older actress. When it comes to child actors, it's more common to pick someone older and pretend they're a younger child. It's definitely not common to have someone much younger. It's clear she was the best actress for the job. And if you deny that, it's like, have you even been watching this show? It doesn't matter if she looks like, if she looks a little bit younger. Clearly, she plays Leia perfectly. And I like how Leia has her own arc of, like, going more confident in herself. In the beginning, she's like, I'm not even an Organa, because she has that sharp wit that whole time. That's a constant. In the beginning, she's unsure of herself. She just wants to go, go away, live live a carefree life life but by the end she's learned that you know people need help and she's in a position to help them and she right no that's it i don't need to add on to it that's it she can help people she has the power to help people and that's what she she'll do she'll go on to become awesome reva I think I already talked about Reva, but again, I liked the politics. Yes, you gave her a backstory. I guess a lot of people with these shows, when they come out weekly, they just kind of form opinions too soon. People really didn't like her, and it's like, and they're like, where's their backstory? Where's her backstory? Just like, wait a second. They'll give you her backstory if it's important. So it's like, I hope people judge her based on the first couple episodes. It's like, could you at least wait until the show's out? Please, before you're like, oh man, I hate her. Just, I don't know. Rant, that's not the point. Hmm. My God, I've been ranting for over 20 minutes now, and uh, uh, no one's getting to this. No one's listening to this anyway. 
think I got my my point out. I think I got my point out. Again, just to wrap it all up, this was a good show. This is a great addition to Star Wars. I can't wait to watch this again in my whole, like, in context with everything. I'm happy this was added to Star Wars. If you've somehow made it all the way to this part and you've watched all my videos, thank you. I mean, seriously, from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much. You guys can't imagine how much I appreciate it, how much it makes me feel like I'm not a crazy person talking to a camera at nighttime. I really hope you'll stick around, maybe check out some other of my reactions. Thank you so much for watching. What was your favorite part of this episode? What was your favorite part of this show? Over here is whatever YouTube decides to show you. Over here is a playlist of my videos. And on my face is the subscribe button. Like, comment, subscribe, criticize even. I don't mind. See ya.